Yes, what happened to Seamus? I don't know, I don't know. I couldn't get him on there if you're there. Seamus, phone back again, you can come on. Shameless Seamus. Let's see. Did did you see a man from the fucking um, English Defence League on Newsnight a couple of weeks ago? Who's that? Old uh, Tommy? Tommy Robinson? Yes. Yeah. No, no. I couldn't. I couldn't. I was fucking flabbergasted. I couldn't believe that Jeremy Paxton actually gave this guy 20 minutes of air time. And you know, Jeremy Paxton, he'd normally he'd rip your new arsehole if he thought, if he thought you deserved it. And uh, he actually kind of just pandered to are we EDL pal? It's totally misunderstood and all the rest of it. And, and you know, what's the quality and all the rest of it? And I just sat there and thought to myself, Wayne scratched that cunt. He's a fucking racist underneath. <laughs> That's all he is. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable how, how much airtime that, that they're allowed to give these people, which when they've got really no mandate at all. I mean, it's totally undeserved how much time they give them. It's just... I mean, for, for a, an equivalent party of size, it, there wasn't a, a right-wing agitating party like that, you know, it would get minuscule airtime, but for some reason they they love to give these nomads the airtime and the media coverage, which, I don't know, it's just stupid. Tommy, we have this in Northern Ireland called the Democratic Unionist Party. They're the same fucking, the same outfit, just with a different banner over the top of them. They do get the airtime. It's, uh, it's unfortunate, yeah, but that's, that's institutionalised racism. Yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah. I mean, I grew up, you know, I, I, I went from, I, I was born in the, the Gallagate. Actually, I wasn't. I was born in Springburn. I went to school in the Gallagate. I lived in the Gallagate, and then I moved to London in 1974, 75. And it was back in those days with no blacks, no dogs, no Irish, all that sort of thing. You know, and the institutionalized racism was fucking rife. Uh, you would get shopkeepers, lollipop men, coppers, teachers, fucking dentists. Everybody would talk down to you, you know, because if you were white and English, you were all right and all the rest of it. Um, it's funny how things have changed a little bit down the years. I mean, I was saying to her the other night, has anybody picked up the fact that two sons of Irish immigrants got England into the fucking World Cup finals? You know, Stephen Gerrard and Wayne Rooney. They are sons of Irish immigrants. But no, nothing said about the Irish anymore. It's now moved on to this Muslim thing, you know? I mean, I wonder how many, you know, people would have been fucking crowing about if a, a couple of fellas called Mohammed Islam Farouk or something like scored the winning goals and got England in the World Cup, you know, against this backdrop of this institutionalized racism, which, which over the course of time changes its coat the racism is still there. It's just who they point it towards. It's a very English thing. It's, it's all to do with the, the empire and divide and conquer, divide and rule. And, um, you know, it's, it shouldn't surprise me that things will never change because it will take generations and generations and generations to, you know, rid ourselves of this fucking nonsense that goes on within our society. And it's the same in Northern Ireland as well. It's just, you know, we live in an institutionally racist society. Uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, whatever, we don't really have the immigration. Um, we don't have a massive influx of immigration in Northern Ireland. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't talk to people over here and they go, oh, fuck me, this place will end up like England. No, it won't, because for one, it's too fucking cold anyway. You know, you don't get many fucking immigrants want to move to a place of Baltic freezing. But secondly, um, it will never end up like that because there is, there's nothing in this little culture that we live, we live in the Northern Ireland here that, 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 that wants to openly accept and integrate, you know? It's, it's a constant state of fear. And uh, I was even watching the, the Ulster Unionist Party uh, having a, uh, they're having their conference at the moment and the head of the Ulster Unions Party got up today and says, uh, given all the pain and the suffering that the, the good loyalist Protestant people of Ulster have been through throughout the Troubles, what they're advocating doing is opening up a, um, 
a therapy center, which is going to be the benchmark and going to be the best therapy center in the world. This was his words, in the world. And he says, if we can heal our Protestant people of the troubles, then we can heal anybody. And I just sat there and thought to myself, you cunts perpetrated the fucking troubles upon everybody else. And now it's all over. You still want to play the part of being the victim. And that is all, that to me is all enveloped in institutionalized racism. Hello. And it's, a, a, it's a permanent state of being in disillusion. They just, they've, they've, not got, they've not got a clue, but it's, in a way, it's, uh, they're brainwashed this way. They're, they're, they're the, I mean, the, the, the people who they, they, they claim, you know, the, the kings and the queens and the, the leaders, you know, they they disown them in a minute, and I mean all this stuff about the flag and the country and all the patriotism—it's just it's all fake, and it's made so as it, it keeps uh, well the working class mindset keeps them preoccupied with little trivial fights between you know anybody who's different from themselves. So anything at all, like you said, in times gone by, it was the Irish, it was the Jews, now it's Pakistanis, now it's the gypsies, now it's Muslims, whatever the enemy of the month it happens to be. You know I mean, it's it's a way of keeping people uh, away from the real, diver the real. I mean, it's diverting people away from the real issue of who really controls society. Who is it that's the, the con who's, who's controlling society? It's the kings, it's the queens, it's your politicians, your bankers, and this is the only division until we sort out these people who are controlling it and messing up for everybody else, everything else is just a, a division. So, And it's just a, a way to keep us fighting between each other. So religions and wars and, you know, this thing about pride in your... You know, it's got to be the most craziest, stupidest thing to have pride in. You know, a, a quirk of fate, a quirk, just by sheer luck that you've done nothing about it by design to where you were born. So why should you be patriotic about a flag? Particularly with a flag Absolutely. like Britain's history. I mean, when you, if you have got half a brain and you read what has been done under, you know, it like gets called the butcher's apron for a reason. So if you, you imagine it, if you're a flag-waving Brit and then if you develop half a brain and you surely should look at that and say, well, hold on, how can I even hold that flag up and be proud of it? for what it's done. And like you say, institutionalised racism. So th there's people there who are holding this flag and are proud to be British. Like they've actually done fucking something to be British. Because, I, I mean, know, they could just as easily have been born in the foothills of Afghanistan. They could have been born in the Hindu Kush mountains. They could have been born as a Bangladeshi, as a Chinese man, as an Australian. Yet they're saying, oh yes, we're proud. And this other thing about the land, how... You know, they're actually daft enough to think that they own the land. But mm -hmm. the, tr the yep. true thing is, the fucking land owes you, owns you. Because well, you, as soon as you die, what happens? You come back to the land, so you don't own anything. The land owns you. The, the trees will be here, the land, the grass. This will all be here and you'll be fucking gone. So why fight over the ownership? of a fucking land and why claim ownership of Britain? You know, it's it's one of the most crazy psychologies and philosophy. You said uh, something else about the Celtic earlier on about our philosophy. We're in a direct juxtapose to their philosophy. I mean, it just so happens that we exist in the same city and breathe the same air in Glasgow. But, you know, if you look at Rangers and their institution, how they are there is the bastion of Britishness and, you know, the empire and everything that's wrong and racist and bigoted and representing, you know, the flag and all that. And yet we're here as an all-inclusive club that welcomes everybody and says, you know, look, fuck it. These are just crazy. They're just the craziest bastards in God's green earth. That's, it's, it's the most crazy situation, if you think of it, mate, that how Celtic can be. Uh, you, you've come up with some, you've mentioned some really good points there. Stay there, I'll phone you back. Can I just phone you back the line? Stay there. Stay Skype just disintegrates. It fucking disintegrates. I hate when it happens, but never mind. It's not a problem. Nothing that can be done. Right, we're going to. Uh, there we go. Right, 
Close it. Close your box. Sounds okay, everybody. Everybody can sound. Right, that sounds better there. Hello again. Yeah, mate. Sorry. On you go. Uh, no, no, right, what was I going to say? Uh, so a few good points you picked up on there. I mean, one of them was when I grew up in London, right? And I grew up in Haringey, which is meant to be, you know, the most politically correct fucking borough of all the left wing boroughs in, in London and all the rest of it. And to many degrees it was. And, you know, we weren't allowed to have manhole covers, we needed inspection chambers, we didn't have like bin bags, we had refuse sacks and all the rest of it. But see, on every fucking corner, we had West Indian cultural centres, Irish cultural centres, African cultural centres, Polish cultural centres. And while the majority of my mates used to say, this is fucking fantastic, we're catering and, you know, and, and offering facilities to all these immigrants, I used to say to them, where is the fucking multicultural centre? Where is, it, where is the fucking centre where we all get together? Mm. Because it goes back to the principle of empire, divide and rule. They couldn't no, no longer do it on a global stage where they could divide and rule the fucking Indians and the Afghans and all the rest of them. Look at the trouble they've caused through the sultanates and taking over the Ottoman Empire and all the rest of it. What they've done was they divide and conquer the people in their own land. Second point is you talk about, we were talking about Britishness there. I was in a town. I live in a mixed village, but we are completely surrounded on all sides by loyalist areas and all our taxi services are all nearly all fucking ex-UVF men I mean there's fuckers that are driving about driving taxis that have killed five, six, seven people and they shouldn't really you know you shouldn't even be in a car with them let alone in the same fucking country and I was in this taxi with a fella and he was, I said to him how do you feel about your flag being taken down over City Hall and he says that's our fucking culture that's our culture that's our flag. And I said to him, well, listen, I, I, I'm from Britain. I was born in Scotland, raised in London. I'm British. I'm not British and Northern Ireland, United Kingdom. I don't see myself as Irish. I'm of Irish heritage, yes. But, you know, like the rest of the Irish people that live in Britain, we're, 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 we're assimilated. And I said to him, what does it mean to you to be British? And he says, well, the flag. And I said, well, no, that doesn't mean anything. It's just a, it's just a token thing. And he says to me, well, what does it mean to you to be British? And I said, well, I'll put it in fucking two words, Mo Farah. And he looked at me like I had two heads. And I said to him, well, what's wrong with Mo Farah? I said, you don't think Mo stands for fucking Morris, do you? It stands for Mohammed. I said, and see when he wins those gold medals for Great Britain, he's not down praying to Jesus, he's down praying to Allah. <laughs> I said, so how much more British and multicultural and how, you know, isn't that something to celebrate? And the guy went, well, as long as he doesn't come here. <laughs> like, what the fuck has that got to do with being British? This idea, you, you, you have this bastardized idea, you know, and there's nowhere else in the rest of the United Kingdom that has the same outlook as they do in this little fucking enclave of Northern Ireland and over a governed way. I know, mate. I it's, know. It's, a, it's a fucking sad state of affairs. And as you say, being born under a flag, being born under, you know, I, sometimes it pisses me off about people's sense of nationality. You know, especially in my own experience. Born in Glasgow, raised in London, of Irish descendancy, and here I am now living in Ireland. I've gone full circle as far as I'm concerned with my family's roots. But I see myself as a socialist, as a nationalist, as a humanitarian, and at least of all, a bigot. And that doesn't come... Oh, hold on. Somebody else coming in? Yeah. I think yeah I'm going to pass you over to my... I'll be just three in a moment. He phoned, he just phoned, he's just phoned him back. He's all packed up, man. Stay there. Welcome to Gift Gaff's voicemail. The person... <laughs> Are Hello. We, oh, oh, you're there, Una. I'm. I'm here. What are you doing, back? We're having a wonderful philosophy. Uh, uh, we're having a wonderful chat. There, what's going down? <laughs> philosophical oh my goodness! Chat. I'm sitting across, looking at my ass, going, "You didn't talk to me." Like that. <laughs> hey. Anyway. Anyway. 